We is the ops for. I don't get no. We is in the ass for when they die. Look at us. Three gunmen in a black Dodge Durango get out of the car and then start firing. A 31-year-old man was shot and then run over by that SUV. Okay. And the cars we be stealing. This some of the cars I don't even get in no more. Like RT Durangos, I don't get in them cars no more. July 23rd, 2023. Antoine Benoit was at a Shell gas station on the corner of East 86th Street in the south side of Chicago. This is a former gang member who had been in and out of prison and had recently been employed at FedEx and was looking to turn his life around. And at around 4.10 p.m. that day, a black Dodge Durango would pull up at the gas station and three masked gunmen would exit the car and unload upwards of 21 shots towards Antoine Benoit, hitting his chest and abdomen before jumping back into the Dodge then fleeing the scene. New for us here at 5, Chicago police have released new video of a deadly shooting at a Chatham gas station, hoping the public can help identify the suspects. This shooting happened the afternoon of July 26th on state near 86th, and you'll see it here. It happens fast, just eight seconds, but we can see it from several angles. Three gunmen in a black Dodge Durango get out of the car and then start firing. A 31-year-old man was shot and then run over by that SUV He, from his injuries. A small memorial left by Anton Benoit's family remains on the sidewalk outside the Shell gas station where the 31-year-old was killed a few days ago. Surveillance video from several different angles captures Benoit's brazen getting out of their black Dodge Durango and opening fire. And one of the alleged gunmen in the shooting would be none other than up-and-coming Chicago drill rapper Vaughn of 1700. He'd post a picture on his social media of him in a shifty mask, a black hoodie, and torn jeans, which somewhat matched the description of one of the shooters at Anton Benoit's shooting. Furthermore, he'd go on Adam22's No Jumper podcast and tell Adam about his reluctance to drive Dodge Durangos anymore. Okay. And the cars we be stealing, this some of the cars I don't even get in no more, like RT Durango. Goals, I don't get in them cars no more. He'd also let Adam know that if any of his ops died, he wants them to know they're the ones behind the murder. We is the ops for. I don't get no in the for. <laughs> so tell them we is them for. That's what we doing to the ops for. When they I look at us, yes. But when you say we, you're not saying that you personally want to be involved in anything like this, right? I, we, team, whatever you want to call it, we is <laughs> in the <laughs> and similar to various Chicago rappers who committed crimes and rapped about them in songs, Vaughn of 1700 would allegedly rap about this incident in numerous songs, like his song Flame Out, where he raps about gunning someone down and watching the footage back like it was an adult movie. To properly understand this up and coming Chicago drill rapper, I need to take you back and tell you about his upbringing in Chicago. His gang ties to SBG Toss Gang, a four corner hustlers gang hailing from the west side of Chicago, and how this 21 year old Chicago rapper allegedly cut a body and opened brags about it. I, we, team, whatever you want to call it, we just <laughs> in the <head> again. <laughs> oh, be, I want to talk about these interviews. Going, if an interview going to get me locked up, let me know now because I'm, I'm going to trial as soon as they say, yeah, we got this evidence from this interview. If y'all don't get y'all d ass on. Vaughn of 1700. Real name, Davon Meeks, is a 22-year-old rapper hailing from the west side of Chicago known as Out West. Notoriously known for parts like West Garfield Park, dubbed as one of Chicago's most dangerous neighborhoods, Vaughn of 1700 hails from North Austin, rapping Toss Gang, which is otherwise known as SBG or Sosa Gang, a younger sub-gang that derived from an older gang that was called L Block. So, you know, let the people know where you're from. You're from Out West, right? Yeah, I'm off the island of So, would that be considered like L Block? Fact, yeah. L Block, Toss Gang, SBG, Holly Grove, Social Gang, TTG, TT Gang, all the same. So are those like different blocks or it's just like different names? All within the same area? Or? Yeah, it's all, it's all the same strip. All North Avenue was just, it'll be 1400 North, da 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 da. 1500 North, da 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 da. 1600 North, da 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 da. 1700 North, da 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 da. But we all the same shit though, just all different blocks. Oh, so that's why your name bought off 1700, because you are. I'm on 1700, fact. And unlike more popular gang sets like the Black Disciples or the Gangster Disciples, Toss Gang raps a set known as the Four Corner Hustlers, a gang faction more common in the west side of Chicago, and the beef being with two sets named Sane Gang and Black Mob, which are located in close proximity to where Vaughn's gang resides. A weird conundrum in the story would take place when Vaughn was 14 years old as his mother would pack up her belongings and move her and Dave Von Meeks to Atlanta and far away from Chicago's crime streets. For those in the audience, getting to know you for the very first time. Care to share where you were born? I was born in Chicago. And care to share where you were raised as well? So I was raised in Chicago. 
and still reside in Chicago today. No. Oh. What age were you when you officially left Chicago? 14, 15, 13, 14, 15, I don't remember. Now, what was the reason for moving out of Chicago at that time in your life? I don't even know. My, I think my OG just wanted to move. She was getting some bread and she was paying. She had a lot of money and she just wanted to move, so we moved. But Vaughn of 1700 would never really leave the gang life behind him as he would frequently come back to Chicago and visit his Tusk gang members. Why you taking that? Hey, why you coming to the seven block too? Where you going, man? My block is this, this, this golden block. Golden block over there. My block all the way across the street over there. Now, Vaughn's gang had been dubbed as EBK, meaning they could likely be feuding with other four corner hustler gangs. And regardless of residing in Atlanta, he'd frequently visit Sharek, allegedly catching a body and detailing the incidents in his music. With one such incident happening on November 14th, 2021, a 27 year old black mob member was standing on the 5900 block of West North Avenue with a 30 year old woman when a car drove by and unloaded a barrage of shots towards the couple, hitting both individuals multiple times wounding the woman and unfortunately Rayshon Davis, an 18 year old Vaughn would reference this incident on his song Walk Down, rapping about catching an op on North Avenue and the toe needing a tag after being done with him and referring to this situation again on his song Stain, rapping about drilling an op and shooting his woman's bonnet off and even riding around in the rack with Bronx trail rapper D Dang and telling him about how one of his ops got left on North Avenue as they were driving by and because of such events taking place, Von's Ops, Black Mob, and Zane Gang would form an alliance together in an effort to retaliate against Toss Gang. This is a sentiment Von touched on, which 16 shot him on how his Ops were clicked up and he would outright confess an incident where he had told a producer who was clicked up with Zane Gang that he will kill him. What got it like this? Like, how did it get to the point where it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all on tour with the whole, what's up? Cause we dying and clicking up. My homie was just losing and clicking up. Like, he's this nigga from all the way from the North Lawndale community, clicking up with the from the Austin community. Like, how is y'all doing type of this type of shit? Just be clicking up. That's it. A lot of clicked up. All our ops clicked up. So if you want to be with the ops, you're going to be with the ops. One of the producers locked in with the ops. He say, man, yeah, don't be on that. I say, man, what he is, he saying gang, tell him we killing him. Oh my God. <laughs> I say, you saying, I say, we kill him. And in an interview with Adam22, he would throw shade on Tay Savage and FYBJ Main's efforts to bring peace amongst their gangs in the south side of Chicago, with Vaughn of 1700 outright saying he wouldn't push peace with his ops solely because he had lost family members in his gang war and he wanted to kill them. How you feel about J Main though, like with the, the push and peace thing? He had to like link with Tay Savage to make that happen. So they're like kind of two people that are from yeah, that opposing shit was, sides. That shit was crazy when I seen that. That was some weird. You can never I, imagine yourself doing that. I'll never do no shit like that. Really? <laughs> Hell no. Like, it's different for me because I lost family. So a lot of people lost friends, shit, but I lost family. Mm. And then so it's just like, it's different. And as recent as June the 3rd, one of 1700's best friend and fellow Toss Gang member, 19-year-old Mook Money, real name J. Ron Smith, was shot multiple times in the early hours of June the 3rd. He'd be transported to Stroga Hospital at 4 a.m. in the morning, but would unfortunately succumb to his injuries. Same gang mainly would react to the news of Mook Money's passing by saying, Long live Gleezy Gang Lil KJ. And Vaughn would mourn his friend and vow to avenge his fallen brother. But the staying of Money Mook wasn't the end of it because tragedy would strike again two weeks later as a 13-year-old boy named Lil Mook who was allegedly associated to Toss Gang would be ambushed on the sidewalk of South Independence and West 13th Street where a barrage of shots was unloaded towards him and he would unfortunately pass away. The 13-year-old boy is after being shot on the city's west side and police say that young teen standing on a sidewalk on South Independence near West 13th when he was in the head and tonight investigators still looking for that shooter he was apparently the little brother to 19 year old Manny Moog who had been gunned down a fortnight prior surveillance footage shows three boys playing with fireworks before they encountered Lil Moog in a convenience store unloading shots at the teen and taking his life and with all this gang violence in the west side of Chicago it wouldn't stop Vaughn from acting wild on the internet and calling out his ops on interviews and confessing to 
in them and not believing the evidence could be used against him in court. Do a lot of times. They is lying, talking about some incriminating mm -hmm. themselves on interviews. Look, for we is killing the ops, for I don't get no. We is in they ass, for <laughs> so tell them we is them, for that's what we doing to the ops, for when they die, look at us, yes. But when you say we, you're not saying that you personally want to be involved in anything like this, right? I, we, team, whatever you want to call it, we is <laughs> in they ass. <laughs> Niggas be on it, talking about these interviews going. If an interview gonna get me locked up, let me know now. Cause I'm, I'm going to trial as soon as they say, yeah, we got this evidence from this interview. And with all the losses born of 1700 had endured, we take it upon himself to step into the booth and tell his life story as a gang member in the streets of Chicago. From losing his closest friends and detailing how he and his gang would run up on the ops and gun them down. One of 1700 would kick off his rap career all the way in 2020 by releasing his first single, Walk Down. But he wouldn't actually start seeing success until releasing his November 2023 single, Free Break, where he calls for the freedom of his big brother, SBG Break, and the freedom of his Toss Gang hitters, claiming his gang ain't like Gunner, and if one of them had snitched, they'd be and claiming that if anybody had beef with Toss Gang, they should hide their kids because they'll also come hunt down the Ops' kids and gun them down. Free Brick was so dark and disrespectful, Von's own mother had to call him and express her disapproval for the contents that he was rapping about. My first song, my OG ain't really like me doing music because my first song, I wasn't really rapping. I was just dissing people, like, mm -hmm. I was just dissing people. And then my mama real known in the city and shit. So everybody was calling her phone like, oh, your son just said this in his song and da, 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 da. And she thought the whole world was trying to kick me. So it was like, she ain't really never liked me rapping and shit. But now she, she on the train. And if his mother thought the music content his son was rapping about couldn't get any more ominous, the release of On Deck would surely put a frown on her face. Because on February 12th, Vaughn would capitalize on the momentum he had garnered from Free Break and drop On Deck, doubling down on the sinister endeavors his gang would participate in and describing the excitement he feels when his ops fall down on the ground while Vaughn is chasing them and how he's ready to take their breath and proclaiming his willingness to celebrate the death of an op, even if he was two years old. And then on July 23rd, 2023, Antoine Benoit was at a Shell gas station on the corner of East 86th Street in the south side of Chicago. This is a former gang member who had been in and out of prison and had recently been employed at FedEx and was looking to turn his life around. And at around 4.10 p.m. that day, a black Dodge Durango would pull up at the gas station and three maxed gunmen would exit the car and unload outputs of 21 shots towards Antoine Benoit, hitting his chest and abdomen before jumping back into the Dodge, then fleeing the scene. New for us here at 5, Chicago police have released new video of a deadly shooting at a Chatham gas station, hoping the public can help identify the suspects. This shooting happened the afternoon of July 26th on state near 86th and you'll see it here. It happens fast, just eight seconds, but we can see it from several angles. Three gunmen in a black Dodge Durango get out of the car and then start firing. A 31 year old man was shot and then run over by that SUV. He died from his injuries. A small memorial left by Anton Benoit's family remains on the sidewalk outside the Shell gas station where the 31 year old was killed a few days ago. Surveillance video from several different angles captures Benoit's brazen killers getting out of their black Dodge Durango and opening fire. And on his April the 23rd release titled Beat Up the Road, he'd rap about catching an op and killed them on camera and how he made a great clip that they could watch back. And he'd even mention how he caught an op, planned to clock in at work and made sure he clocks him out. This sounds eerily similar to the incident at the gas station involving Antoine Benoit who had been employed at the FedEx and was on duty before being shot by three masked assailants, then jumping back into the black Durango and fleeing the scene. Well, listen, Karen, the victim is 31-year-old Anton Benoit. He is from Chatham. He grew up in a very close family. He is one of seven children. Family members say they hope that the surveillance video released today by police will help catch Benoit's killers. A small memorial left by Anton Benoit's family remains on the sidewalk outside the Shell gas station where the 31-year-old was killed a few days ago. Surveillance video from several different angles captures Benoit's brazen kill getting out of their black Dodge Durango and opening fire. I know somebody know who somebody is and I mean if we knew something we'll say something and we love everybody so just try to help my brother. 
Benoit's relatives who did not want their faces shown are asking for the public's help in finding the men who killed Anton at the shell on the corner of 86th and South State. He apparently was pulled up at pump number one when the men opened fire around 410 on a Wednesday afternoon. He loved helping people, he loved laughing, he loved smiling. Family members say Benoit was excited to begin a new job at FedEx after spending a few years in and out of prison. But what a lot of people may have not known is that Vaughn may have had his hands involved in another that involved a 27-year-old man named Antoine Smith who had gang ties to SPG. Antoine Smith was at a gas station in Austin on the west side of Chicago when two individuals ambushed him and put him down at the gas station in Thorntons. He was shot multiple times in the chest and would be transported to Stroger Hospital where he'd lose his life. And on his track flame out, he'd rap about leaving a man's deceased body at Thorntons and how he someone up and how his head was even honking the steering wheel. That when I talk to the had, younger dudes look, a lot of times. They as lying talking about some incriminating they self on interviews. Look for we is in the ops for I don't get no we is yeah. So tell them we is killing them for that's what we doing to the ops for when they I look at us, yes. But when you say we, you're not saying that you personally want to be involved in anything like this, right? I, we team, whatever you want to call it, we is killing <laughs> Be, I don't want to talk about these interviews. Gonna, if an interview going to get me locked up, let me know now. Because I'm, I'm going to trial as soon as they say, yeah, we got this evidence from this interview. If y'all don't get y'all dumb ass on. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I feel like you could say you could say it. You could say whatever this until is, you are actually being charged with something. This and is then freedom, it could come back to bite you This is ass. freedom of speech, bro. Right. This is freedom <laughs> of speech. If I sit right here and say, yeah, I fucked yesterday. And then it so happened, a news article, Tim up got shot yesterday. What they gonna say, I did it just cause I said the shit? Nah. All right then, so I just two motherfuckers yesterday and two motherfuckers just So come lock me up. And if such disrespect wasn't enough, one of 1700 would have a picture of this deceased man in a music video as he aimed two guns at him and gunning him down. These die every year. We ain't in some years. Them every year or they shot up. We don't get shot up, knock on wood. Like our parties don't get shot up. My homies don't get out of none of that. It's just not really a fair fight. You guys got them outmatched. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, like, this YouTube videos and shit, this YouTube videos are like, it's this page that do like this hood d homies versus this hood d homies. They got eyes up there. I counted it out. They was at like 30. Like, our videos, two minutes. That's how many d we got. Our videos was two. We got two minutes worth longer d homies. They videos was seven minutes into like, Three minutes, they was at like 25 homies. Mm. Now, what if one of 1700 is a bona fide shooter in the streets of Chicago, similar to rappers in the rack like King Vaughn and Bloodhound Jeff, we may never know for sure. But what we do know is that his rise in the rap game is imminent. I'm gonna say, I don't really, I don't rap, I do a lot of too. <laughs> like when money get involved with stuff like that. You're telling me you're an assassin. No, I'm not telling you nothing. Oh, okay, but you're kind of like hitting at it. Yeah. Because, okay, you have a lot of songs and like different clip, uh, clips and interviews and stuff where you're basically like, hey, tell my ops, we're going to come kill your ass. Tell I'm just like, you maybe shouldn't say that. You Why? can think that, but you shouldn't say that. Why? I feel like it could be used against you in a court of law. How? <laughs> me and my mama go through this every day. How? <laughs> Okay, so by you saying that, you're basically telling me that no, of course, Adam, I wouldn't actually do any of this shit, so therefore I can rap about it. We are going to murder Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Now tell me how, what they gonna say, just cause I said I'm gonna murder the fuck out them? Right. See, if I was a lawyer, everybody would be home. Everybody. Lawyers dumb as f Why? What, what, what is- Cause they do, they dumb as f they- you can say the simplest shit. court. I get straight to the point. Look, my my man's innocent. Y'all got him on the camera, but y'all can't even prove that's him. So what is we finna do? Speedy trial. You ain't we gone? 